So very, very good to be with you again. Bill Pfeiffer speaking from Marysfield. I've got a beautiful story for you today. If you like the story, change and touch someone else's life by sharing it with, uh, with a friend or someone in your family. It, you never know where they go and, and, and the kind of good things that they do. Nice story. It had been some time since Jack had seen the old man. College, girls, career, and life itself had gotten in the way. In fact, Jack moved clear across the country in pursuit of his dreams. There, in the rush of, of his busy life, Jack had little time to think about the past and often no time to spend with his wife and son. He was working on his future and nothing could stop him. Over the phone, his mother told him, Mr. Belser died last night. The funeral is Wednesday. Memories flashed through his mind like an old newsreel as he quietly sat, remembering his childhood days. Jack, did you hear me? Oh, sorry, Mom. Yes, I heard you. It's been so long since I thought of him. I'm sorry, but I honestly thought he died years ago, Jack said. Well, he didn't forget you. Every time I saw him, he'd ask how you were doing. He'd reminisce about the many days you spent over his side of the fence, as he put it. I love that old house he lived in, Jack said. You know, Jack, after your father died, Mr. Belser stopped in to make sure that you had a man's influence in your life. He's the one who taught me carpentry, Jack said. I wouldn't be in the business if it weren't for him. He spent a lot of time teaching me things he thought were important. Mom, I'll be there for the funeral, Jack said. As busy as he was, he kept his word. Jack caught the next flight to his hometown. Mr. Belser's funeral was small and uneventful. He had no children of his own, and most of his relatives had passed away. The night before he had to return home, Jack and his mom stopped by to see the old house next door one more time. Standing in the doorway, Jack paused for a moment. It was like crossing over into another dimension, a leap through space and time. The house was exactly as he remembered. Every step held memories, every picture, every piece of furniture. Jack stopped suddenly, however. What's wrong, Jack? His mom asked. The box is gone. What box? Mom asked. There was a small gold box that he kept locked on top of his desk. I must have asked him a thousand times what was inside. All he ever told me was the thing I value most. And it was gone. Everything about the house was exactly how Jack remembered it, except for the box. He figured someone from the Belzer family had taken it. Now I never, I'll never know what was so valuable to him, Jack said. I better get some sleep. I have an early flight home. It had been two weeks since Mr. Belser died. Returning home from work one day, Jack discovered a, a note in his mailbox, signature required on a package, please stop by the main post office within the next three days, the note read. Early the next day, Jack re retrieved the package. The small box was an old looking, the box was old and looked like it had been mailed a hundred years ago. The handwriting was difficult to read, but the return address caught his attention. Mr. Harold Belser, it read. Jack took the box out to his car and ripped open the package. Inside was the gold box and an envelope. Jack's hand shook as he read the note inside. Upon my death, please forward this box and its contents to Jack Bennett. It's the thing I valued most in my life. A small key was taped to the letter, his heart racing as tears filled his eyes. Jack carefully unlocked the box. Inside there he found a beautiful gold pocket watch. Running his fingers slowly over the finely etched casing, he unlatched the cover. Inside he found these words engraved, Jack, thanks for your time. Harold Belser. The thing he valued most was my time. Jack held the watch for a few minutes, then called his office and cleared his appointments for the next two days. Why? Janet, his assistant, asked. 
I need some time to spend with my son and wife, he said. Oh, by the way, Janet, thanks for your time. I've been at the deathbed of about 450 people and no one has ever said to me, I wish I had spent more time at the office. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Time, love, they're interdependent on each other, aren't they? Love is a four-letter word, and it is spelled T-I-M-E. How are you doing with the love for the people in your life? Are you spending T-I-M-E with them? Happiness tomorrow always, always depends on doing the truth today. Good to be with you. Look forward to being with you again tomorrow. God bless. Just the other day He came to the world in the usual way But there were planes to catch And bills to pay He learned to walk while I was away And he was talking for I knew it And as he grew He'd say, I'm gonna be like you, Dad You know I'm gonna be like you And the cat's in the cradle And the silver spoon Little boy blue and the man on the moon When you're coming home I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. My son turned ten just the other day. He said, Thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, Not today. I got a lot to do. He said, That's okay. But his smile never did and said I'm gonna be like him Yeah, you know I'm gonna be like him And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon the Little boy blue and the man on the moon When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when But we'll get together then You know we'll have a good time then It came from college just the other day So much like a man I just had to say Son, I'm proud of you Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and they said with a smile What I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys See you later, can I have them, please? And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon Little boy blue and the man on the moon When you're coming home, son, I don't know Since retired, my son's moved away I called him up just the other day I said I'd like to see you if you don't mind He said I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids are the flu But it's your nice talking to you, Dad It's been your nice talking to you And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me He'd grown up just like me My boy was just like me